Hey there, and welcome to the screencast about how does Office 365 work? Um, I wanna start off a series of Office 365 videos here, um, really with just focusing on how does Office 365 work? Because um, it's a question I get very, very often about like why do things open up on the desktop? Where do my files save if I'm working in Teams? Where do they save if I'm just like collaborating with a teacher? Um, where do they save if I'm a student and I wanna send something you know, to a teacher? So I kinda wanna go through how it works, um, the mechanics behind it, and really just give you a quick demo of how things open up in the browser and how they open up in the desktop. So first things first is um, everything in Office 365 is saved in two places. So we have um, everything here, such as your uh, school email, Word, uh, school email through Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, all of these things show up in your OneDrive only. They are files just for you, and they're files to share with just a few people. So like if you are working on a PowerPoint with a classmate or you, you and your uh, partner in class are working on a PowerPoint, um, you one of you would make it in your OneDrive, one of you would share it. Um, there would be one person who's the owner and the one person that has access to it. Um, and if you are the person that is like, was shared on the document, it's not actually gonna show up in your OneDrive because you don't own the file. The same with a Word document. If you are collaborating on a lesson plan or you're collaborating on an activity with a teacher or a student um, and it is in one person's OneDrive, it's not gonna show up in the other person's because that file um, is owned by one person and not the other. There is an area in OneDrive that I'll, I'll kind of demo where shared files will show up, but they won't show up in your OneDrive. So just keep that in mind. Um, and all of these things exist in your OneDrive if you're making these documents uh, and they're saved there. The other place that things show up is in SharePoint. So SharePoint itself is its own place uh, where organizations like everyone in the whole school can um, access certain files, but for the big use, SharePoint is where Microsoft Teams is located. So in SharePoint, in Teams, these are files that are shared between teachers and students. Um, things like assignments and Teams, they all live with inside of SharePoint. Um, teachers, you may access uh, certain like scheduling things um, through SharePoint that students don't have access to, um, but both students and teachers collaborating in documents, things that are posted in the general area of Teams, things that are posted um, as assignments, they all live inside of Teams and the, um, inside of SharePoint, and they won't show up in an individual's OneDrive. So to actually get them, you have to go to the Teams um, and, and access those files that way because they don't live in someone's specific OneDrive. Now a teacher or a student can have a file in their OneDrive that they upload to Teams, um, but when it does that, it like makes a copy of it and puts it in the team in SharePoint and it's shareable between everyone. It won't mess up the original document you use, but it is, it's is—it's a copy and it's different and it has different permissions on it. So just keep in mind is everything you're doing in Teams lives inside of SharePoint. Everything you're doing for yourself, making your own Word documents, making your own PowerPoint slides, Excel sheets, um, uh, OneDrive, note, uh, OneNote notebooks, that stuff just for yourself lives there. Anything you're doing in Teams is inside of SharePoint. So when you log into Microsoft Office 365, one of the things that's that kind of like jumps at you is you get all these apps right here. And it doesn't really tell you like, you know, where these apps are located and, and what goes inside of what and where things are stored and saved. So I kind of just want to break this down for you. When you see this, when you first log in, you can think about this, is that you have all of these apps right here are saved inside, even Sway down here in Forms, and there are even some other ones, but I think these are the, the heavy use ones. These are all stored in your OneDrive, but you do have stuff like SharePoint and Teams that open up right here that you can actually go into. If you're working in Teams, everything's getting saved to a SharePoint. If you're working with inside of these and it's like your own documents, um, you're working on your own PowerPoint, you're working on your own Word document, that stuff is saved 
in your OneDrive. So depending on what you're doing, it might be in one place and not the other. So that's that. So that's really where things are, are saved and how like OneDrive kind of like breaks down the apps into where things are stored and so on and so forth. Now, the other big thing I kind of want to go over with you is this idea of desktop versus browser. So in Microsoft Office 365, you will see something like this. Like this is just something I clipped from a blank Word document um, in the browser. You'll see something that says open in the desktop apps. And I get often a lot of questions of like, why does Office 365 do this? Um, something like Google Docs doesn't do this. It, it's confusing. It doesn't, it makes us open in a desktop and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, the real answer is this, is that um, something like Google Docs seems like it's easier because it's only, it's only accessible in one place. You get it through the browser, um, through Safari or Edge or um, Chrome, whatever it is you're using. However, Office 365 has desktop applications associated with it. So you can work on a Word document through Chrome or through Edge or whatever you're using, but you can also open it up in the Microsoft Office desktop app. Now, why would you want to do this? Um, the desktop applications are much more powerful. Um, now, if you've ever had the experience of like formatting a resume or making a brochure in Google Docs, you'll know that it's, it's kind of tricky. Um, it doesn't always look great. Um, and that's the same case if you're doing it in the, in the browser version of Microsoft Word. However, if you open that up inside of the desktop app, you'll have a lot more functionality, a lot more power um, behind what you're doing. Um, and the desktop applications of OneNote, of PowerPoint, of Word, of all the applications that have desktop applications of Excel, they all are more powerful and have features that aren't included um, in the browser application just because there's almost there's only so much you can do in a browser um, and you really need a little bit more a little more power to get uh, some of these more advanced functionalities out. Now, I also want to let you know that you already, like we all understand this uh, concept between a desktop and browser applications because we all do it in a different context on our phone. So I have here just a picture of uh, an iPhone home screen. Um, and on here, there's a bunch of apps, um, but there is an internet browser on here, just like there is on a computer. On this one, it is particularly Safari. Um, but there are also social media applications on here as well. So like I have uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Tumblr, which I don't think anyone's using anymore. Um, and I could also have other ones down and loaded on here. Uh, Facebook, I can have TikTok, all those things. Um, you could access these things with inside of Safari if you wanted to. But most people, and I wager to say all people, if you're making an Instagram post, you're not going through Safari to do that. You're going through um, the application um, for um, for Instagram, uh, which does give you a lot more features. If you're looking, you can, I believe through Safari, like search through Instagram, you can even send direct messages, you can post, but the desk, the, not the desktop version, the mobile version of it, um, you can uh, add certain filters that appear that don't appear in the in the browser version. You can um, you can video chat. You can add stories. So there's a lot of functionality that the mobile version uh, has that the Safari version uh, going through the browser doesn't have. And that's the same with the other ones as well. Um, so in this context, I really want you to think about this. The you would never go through Safari to make a uh, Instagram post. It just it doesn't give you enough features unless you were doing something very bare bones. Think about it in the same way when you're using Office 365. Um, if you're making something like a brochure, you can do it inside of Word Online, but you'll get a lot more bang for your buck if you are using um, if you're using the desktop version. So just keep that in mind. Um, and with that. I want to jump inside of uh, inside of um, Office 365 just to kind of show you once you logged in quickly what it looks like. Um, so, as I said, keep in mind a lot of these things right here are stored in my OneDrive, and I can easily access my OneDrive right here. 
Um, and it has a ton of my files in it. Um, I can create um, new Word documents and new um, Excel documents and new PowerPoint documents, Excel, uh, et cetera, over here. I like to do it this way because it allows me to organize very easily into folders. But just know if you're just creating a Word document, you can just go in here. Um, now from here, uh, let me just create a blank document. I'm gonna let it open up here. And you'll see that I can start typing right away. Um, I can actually title this. I always like to title my document first. Test dot, we'll say 365 because I probably have a document titled test doc and you'll see where it's stored and where it's located and I'm sure I could change it right there, but it's fine right here. So uh, let me just say this is a test document. Um, awesome. So this is saved automatically. Everything's here. I could share someone on this and I could even get someone typing in this exactly at the same time. If you want to do editing in real time, the best way to do it is through the browser. There is some lag between when you're using it in the desktop version. But let's say I'm like, okay, I'm working in this and I want to open it in the desktop version. You absolutely can um, and everything's saved for you. So if I click open in the desktop app, you're going to see this thing pop up. It's going to say, um, you know, the site's trying to open Word. I can click open. You're going to see right away Microsoft Word is opening on the computer. It might take a moment for it to go, but it is going to open up this inside of... Um, inside of my OneDrive, uh, not inside of OneDrive, inside of um, Microsoft Word. So this says this is a test document and I can actually now add to this and whatever I put in here, hello world, um, will show up. Now you'll see it's saving here. And just to kind of let you see, um, sometimes what I like to do is I just like to go to file save. Um, is there a save? Nope, save a copy. There we go, that's fine. I guess I don't like to do that. Um, you'll see over here, um, it's saved to OneDrive. And now let me see if I resume editing here, uh, it's going to refresh itself and look, it says hello world. So these documents are talking to each other because they're both saved inside of my OneDrive. And you can see here that it's saying that Christofolo is editing this now and you see my name pop up. So even if you are working with someone, um, it works really, really well uh, when you're both in the document at the same time. You just might see a little bit of a delay when you're doing the desktop version um, of people like typing at the same time, which depending on what your purpose is, maybe good, maybe bad. Um, and then I can always X out of here and it doesn't change anything. And I could always go back in here. And these two things talk to each other because everything's saved in my OneDrive. You could always open up something. I'll just open up, uh, let's say, uh, Word again on the desktop app. You could just like totally, let me minimize this here. Um, let me minimize PowerPoint as well. Um, so I can go in here and I can actually just, without even going through um, Edge or Chrome, I could just have a blank document. I can just do like, hello everyone again. Let me spell it correctly. Um, it's right up here. So let me see if I want to file and save this. Um, my OneDrive pops up right here so that I'm actually saving to my OneDrive. I can title it here. This is test doc 365, let's say version two, version two. Um, and then let me just uh, save this right here. Um, actually, let me save it inside of this documents folder. Awesome. There we go. So. This goes, you can see it up there, it's saved to OneDrive. And now, if I wanted to go in here, um, let me go back to my actual OneDrive here. Let me go into that Documents folder and I can see that it is saved there. So um, these things, where is Documents? There you go. And we'll see if things load. As I scroll down, there we go, test doc version 365, uh, version two. Um, and I can go in there and it did exactly what I put in there. Hello, everyone. Um, so these things talk to each other and this is really important to know when you're trying to think about like how Office 365 saves things and how it works. There's many ways to open things. There's many ways to save things. There's many ways to do things in Office 365. 
What really you have to find is the way that you like doing it the best. Um, for me, I always like to go through Edge, my uh, my internet browser, go into um, my OneDrive and open things up from this way. But if you do it a different way, that's totally fine. You just gotta find out what works for you. Um, so, um, this is how you do it. This is how Office 365 works. I hope this has helped kind of like uh, in your brain how how something like this works and how it goes through and and how you can use it and how you can save things. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Um, take care.